They are the lifeblood of the deadly cartels, the underdogs who keep things running behind the scenes as they follow the commands of their bosses wholeheartedly. They've seen hell and raised hell. Who are they? Let's take a look inside the life of the cartel's highest ranking kids. Rosario Reta. He was only 13 years old when he was given a gun by a cartel leader and commanded to shoot his first victim, a man. But he wasn't horrified to do it. In fact, he was excited. He said he thought he was Superman, and from that point, he became addicted to killing. He always wanted to be the one handling the gun, the one going on assassination assignments, and the one pulling the trigger. At 17, he had killed more than 30 people, and had gained a reputation as a notorious hitman. Rosario Reta was a member of the notorious Mexican-American gang Los Zetas. He gained notoriety for his involvement in several high-profile murders and acts of violence. Reta was born in Mexico in 1990, but he was raised in Laredo, Texas and became involved with the dark world of cartels at a very young age. Reto quickly rose through the ranks of the gang, and he soon became known for his violent and ruthless nature. He was involved in several shootings and murders, including the killing of a rival gang member in Laredo in 2005. The hitman was one to be reckoned with and had exceptional shooting skills, which could be attributed to an intensive six months of training that he undertook in a camp led by an Israeli mercenary. After he was captured, he boasted that if he were ever in a situation where he could not hit a target in the forehead from a distance, then he would drop his weapon and kneel to be killed. In 2006, Reta's crimes caught up with him, and he was arrested by Mexican authorities for his many atrocities including murder. While in custody, Reta, whose face is covered in different tattoos, gave insight into his daily routine on days when there was work to be done. On other days, he was out in the streets living large with the money he was paid by the cartel and cruising around in expensive cars. Reta is currently serving a 70-year prison sentence. Sandra Avila Beltran Sandra Avila Beltran, also known as the Queen of the Pacific, a notorious drug trafficker from Mexico who gained notoriety for her involvement in the drug trade and her connections to some of the world's most powerful drug cartels. She was born in Baja, California, Mexico in 1960 and was raised in a family with a long history of involvement in the drug trade. Avila Beltran started her career in the drug trade as a young woman working with her uncle, Miguel Angel Félix Gallardo, a powerful drug lord who controlled much of the cocaine and marijuana trafficking between Mexico and the United States in the 80s. She was only 19, but she was determined to be different from the other women caught up with drug lords, mistresses, and sex workers, treated like property. Avila quickly rose through the ranks of the drug trade, and by the 1990s, she was one of the most powerful figures in the industry, with connections to some of the world's most notorious drug cartels. Every day, she lived with the same adrenaline rush, running, hiding, and working. But in 2007, Avila Avila Beltran was arrested by Mexican authorities on charges of conspiracy to traffic cocaine and marijuana to the United States. She was extradited to the United States in 2012 and pleaded guilty to the charges, receiving a sentence of 70 months in prison, including two years of solitary confinement. During her trial, Avila Beltran was portrayed as a key player in the drug trade, with close connections to some of the world's most powerful drug cartels, including the Sinaloa cartel and the Beltran Leva organization. She was also linked to several high-profile drug seizures, including the seizure of nine tons of cocaine from a cargo ship in the Caribbean in 2007. It was that cargo that earned her the name Queen of the Pacific. Now, she's no longer a kid, but it seems she has paid the price for her involvement in the cartels and wants to spend the rest of her life leading a calm life with her son. However, she still basks in the reputation she built as a cartel queen, as the people in her street call her Reina, meaning queen. Edgar Jimenez Lugo also known as El Ponchis, a Mexican-American hitman and enforcer for a notorious drug cartel. He was born in San Diego, California in 1994 and grew up in Mexico, where he became involved in the drug trade at a young age. Lugo was an ordinary kid on the street, caught up in the poverty-stricken, cartel-ridden streets of Mexico. He was only a child when he was recruited to carry out dangerous tasks by the cartel drug lords, including murder. His reward was a weekly payment in pesos and dollars, which he often spent on alcohol to erase the memory of the violent crimes he had committed. In 2010, Lugo was arrested by Mexican authorities on charges of murder and other crimes. He was just 14 years old at the time, making him one of the youngest hitmen ever to be apprehended in Mexico. Despite his young age, however, Lugo had already gained a reputation as a ruthless killer, responsible for carrying out a number of assassinations. He admitting to slitting the throats of four men, and on his face it was clear that whatever traces of childhood had been ripped off him. When asked how he felt about murdering people, he said that the bosses he worked for gave him no option. He was to kill or be killed. Lugo's arrest and subsequent imprisonment sparked widespread concern about the involvement of young people in the drug trade in Mexico. Some other organizations were concerned that he was only a child and his identity needed to be concealed. But he kept a straight face totally out of par with his age 
Even in the face of flashing cameras and crowds, Lugo was ultimately sentenced to three years in a juvenile detention center in Mexico, which was the maximum sentence he could have received as a child. He was deported to the United States for further rehabilitation, since he had American citizenship. He was released from custody in the United States in 2015, and has since remained out of the public eye. Lugo now lives as a free man in the US. Raul Meza Torres Raul Meza Torres of the Sinaloa Cartel, one of Mexico's most powerful drug trafficking organizations. Meza Torres was born in Matamoros, Tamaulipas, Mexico, in 1991, and he grew up in a working class family in the border city. Meza Torres became involved in the drug trade at a young age, and was only 15 years old when he became an assassin for the Sinaloa Cartel. He wanted to be just like his father, Raul Meza Ontiveros, who was a feared, high-ranking leader. His social media accounts were full of pictures showing him displaying weapons and instigating other teenagers to join the deadly mafia culture. Torres quickly rose through the ranks of the Gulf Cartel and became one of the organization's top enforcers, responsible for overseeing the transportation and distribution of drugs, as well as for carrying out acts of violence and intimidation against rivals and anyone who dared to challenge the cartel's dominance in the region. Torres quickly rose through the ranks of the cartel. With deep ties in the cartel, including a romantic relationship with Teresa Zambada Niebla, daughter of one of the most wanted cartel kingpins, Ishmael Almayo Zambada, and several other relatives, he was on top of the world, living his dream as a vicious cartel hitman. However, his luck seemed to run out after his father was killed in October 2007 by unidentified armed assailants. That same month, Torres had his first major encounter with the police. He was pulled over at a checkpoint and arrested for driving an armored vehicle without legal paperwork. He managed to wriggle out that time, but barely two years later, he came face to face with the police again. He had been carrying out one of his favorite sports, drag racing with other teenagers in Los Quintas, when police officers showed up and instructed the vehicles to stop. Torres and his friends responded with gunfire instead, but the counterattack from the police was much stronger, so they fled, leaving the vehicles behind. One of the cars had a plate number that was registered in Torres' name. It was now on their radar, but it wasn't until a year later that he was accosted by the police. This would turn out to be his last time. No, he wasn't arrested, he was killed. Two officers pulled him over for a routine search, but he and his friend were not having it. They pulled out their weapons and shot into the air. In no time, one of the policemen was dead. Torres was fatally injured and declared dead a few hours later. Eduardo Ravello Eduardo Ravello, also known as Tablas, a notorious Mexican-American drug lord and organized crime figure, was wanted by the US government for decades. He was a high-ranking member of the Barrio Azteca gang, which operated primarily in the southwestern United States and northern Mexico. His foray into the world of crime began two decades ago. Ravelo was born on October 13, 1968, in El Paso, Texas, and grew up in the city's Lower Valley neighborhood. He dropped out of high school and became involved in the drug trade in his early teens, eventually rising through the ranks of the Barrio Azteca gang to become one of its top leaders. Over the years, Ravelo became notorious for several criminal activities, including drug trafficking, money laundering, racketeering, and murder. He is believed to have played a key role in the Barrio Azteca's alliance with other drug cartels, including the Juarez Cartel, the Sinaloa Cartel, and the Gulf Cartel. In 2008, Rovelo was indicted in the United States on charges of conspiracy to commit racketeering and murder, as well as drug trafficking and other crimes. He was also named in a separate indictment for his alleged role in the killing of a U.S. consulate employee and her husband in Ciudad Juarez in 2010. She was 35-year-old Leslie A. Enriquez, and her husband was 34-year-old Arthur H. Redolfs. When they were shot, their baby daughter was in the back seat, but was unharmed. In October 2009, he was listed as one of the FBI's most wanted persons, with a reward of $100,000 promised to anyone with information on his whereabouts. Eight years after the Ciudad Juarez incident, Ravelo was linked to the deaths, and the search for him intensified. Ablas, as he was called, remained an influential figure in the Barrio Azteca gang, and his leadership was instrumental in maintaining the organization's dominance in the drug trade in the southwestern United States and northern Mexico. His ability to evade capture for so long was a testament to the gang's sophisticated operation and its ability to evade law enforcement. But in 2018, his cover was blown. He was arrested by Mexican authorities. Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gamboa Jose Rodrigo Arachiga Gomboa, also known as El Chino Antrax, was one of the top enforcers of the Sinaloa cartel. He was born in Culiacán, Sinaloa, Mexico in 1980, and grew up in a community with a long history of involvement in the drug trade. He began his career as a bodyguard for drug lord El Mayo Zambada and his sons. He quickly gained their trust and rose within the organization, setting up one of the first assassin groups, Los Antrax, a terrible band responsible for killings, kidnappings, and torture of the cartel's enemies. Arachiga Gomboa was not like the discreet, more elderly members of the cartel. He was known for displaying his wealth on social media, showing off cars, jewelry, and wads of cash. People followed him like bees after honey, because he would regularly do giveaways for his followers. However, he kept his face blurred in pictures. But this ostentatious living and public show 
turned out to be the end of him. The US government was after him for drug trafficking charges, and they soon noticed that his pictures had one thing in common. He always wore a skull-shaped diamond ring, a Los Antrax signature. In 2014, Arachiga Gamboa was arrested by Dutch authorities in Amsterdam on drug trafficking charges after being tipped off by the US authorities, who solicited the help of Interpol in capturing him. He was extradited to the United States a few months after, where he was charged with conspiracy to distribute large quantities of cocaine and other drugs. He pleaded guilty to the charges in July 2015 and was sentenced to seven years in prison. But in 2020, he was released and placed on house arrest. It was suspected that the sentence had been cut short because he provided prosecutors with valuable information about the inner work of the Sinaloa cartel and its relationships with other criminal organizations. It was also believed that he testified against several other members of the organization, including its top leader, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, who was later extradited to the United States and sentenced to life in prison. This may have been the reason why his killing was ordered by his Sinaloa cartel bosses. He escaped from house arrest on the 9th of May and was declared missing by the authorities. On May 14th, 2020, his apartment was besieged with gunfire by an assassin squad and a shootout ensued until he ran out of ammunition and was subsequently kidnapped. His body was found in a black SUV the next day. Edgar Valdez Villarreal Edgar Valdez Villarreal was called La Barbie by his American football coach while in high school because he was light-skinned and had blue eyes, similar to those of the popular dolls. Little did he know that the name would stick even after he became heavily involved with a cartel life of violence, drug trafficking, and kidnappings. He was born in Laredo, Texas in 1973 and started his career in the drug trade as a young man, working as a low-level dealer in Texas. He quickly rose through the ranks of the Beltran Leva organization and became one of its top enforcers. Valdez was the leader of a dreaded assassin gang known as Los Negros, which was at the forefront of the battle against the Los Zetas for territorial dominance. This battle led to the death of close to 150 people, and Valdez was known for his violent techniques, such as recordings of torture and decapitations. Under his leadership, Los Negros seemed to be invincible, as they employed the assurance of corrupt police officers, retired soldiers, and government officials. Valdez Villarreal became the de facto leader when he was forced to assume control over the cartel after one of the Beltran Leva brothers was arrested. The cartel split into three factions, and another fierce battle began, which saw the region thrown into severe chaos. On one occasion, four men were found hanging from a bridge as a warning to Valdez and his gang. In 2010, Valdez Villarreal was arrested by Mexican authorities on charges of drug trafficking, money laundering, and organized crime. This was after eight years of avoiding arrest while fleeing across Mexico. He was extradited to the United States in 2015 and pleaded guilty to the charges. He was sentenced to 49 years in prison in 2018 and is currently serving his sentence in a high-security federal prison. It was discovered that before his arrest, Valdez planned to show the world the inner workings of his life and had spent $200,000 on a movie but decided not to release it because he felt it would lead to his capture. He was captured anyway. Recently, there have been questions raised as his name has been taken off the Bureau of Prisons database. No official statement has been issued as regards to this, but it is suspected that he may be a key witness in the trial of Garcia Luna, a former Secretary of Public Security who stands accused of taking bribes to protect and help the cartel. Jesus Ernesto Chavez Castillo Jesus Ernesto Chavez Castillo, also known as El Cameo, was a Mexican drug trafficker for the Barrio Azteca gang, which carried out a series of devastating crimes in several cities in Mexico. He was born in Culiacán, Mexico in 1980 and rose through the ranks of the Los Zetas organization to become one of its most prominent enforcers, responsible for violent crimes carried out for what has been described as Mexico's most brutal cartel. Chavez Castillo was involved in a range of criminal activities, including drug trafficking, money laundering, and weapons smuggling. He was ousted as the one who gave the order for the killing of three people attached to the U.S. consulate, including Leslie Enriquez. It is believed that the cartel gangster went after her because she leaked information about another embassy employee helping the cartel to obtain passports illegally. He, on the other hand, insisted that she was killed by rival gangs because she helped to get passports for Los Zetas. Enriquez was four months pregnant when she was killed alongside her husband and baby daughter. Chavez Castillo was arrested by Mexican authorities on charges of drug trafficking and organized crime. He was extradited to the United States where he was tried for his many atrocities. The hitman was also said to be responsible for the killings of 15 young boys who were having a party. They were mistaken for gang members of a rival gang and all brutally eliminated following the orders of Castillo. During his trial, he gave some insight into the workings of the cartel, stating that each hitman was assigned to kill at least eight people a day 
and that he had killed over 800 people in just about eight months from January to August 2009 before he lost count. His confession sparked outrage and dread as people began to make sense of the thousands of deaths that had occurred in the Ciudad Juarez region and neighboring cities. Castillo and his friends were more or less killing machines who woke up every day just to go out and kill. Jaime Gonzalez Duran. Jaime Gonzalez Duran, also known as El Hummer of the feared Los Zetas, began his criminal track record as one of the founders of the brutal cartel known for its violent activities, including insane tortures, beheadings, and public killings. He was born in 1971 in Mexico and rose to become one of the most powerful and feared drug lords in the country. El Hummer did not begin as a criminal. He was a member of the armed forces, joining at 20 years old and serving for over seven years. During his service, he received high-level specialized training by Israeli Defense Forces and the United States military, thus becoming a high-ranking specialized soldier. But he left all of this for the drug trade. Some have speculated that he might have had his eyes on joining the cartel from his heydays as a young chap, but deferred because he felt he didn't have the required training or guts. After joining the cartel, he became described as one of the most violent and dangerous cartel gangsters in the history of the drug trade. And under El Hummer's leadership, the Los Zetas became one of the most feared and notorious criminal organizations in Mexico. And he was responsible for orchestrating a number of high-profile assassinations and violent attacks on rival drug cartels and law enforcement officials. The assassin group had several other ex-military men whose training made it difficult for them to be captured. He is said to have been responsible for the killings of a famous band singer identified as Valentin Elizalde. The motive behind the murder is unknown. In 2008, El Hummer was arrested by Mexican authorities on charges of drug trafficking and organized crime. He was eventually extradited to the United States in 2022 to face charges for his involvement in international drug trafficking. It is believed that he may try to lease for leniency as he faces the possibility of a life sentence. However, since he was arrested over a decade ago, there are chances that his testimony may not be needed or useful in hunting down any other cartel members. Antonio Acosta Hernandez Antonio Acosta Hernandez, also known as El Diego, belonged to the La Linea group of assassins belonging to the sinister Gulf Cartel. He was born in Mexico in 1982 and rose to prominence within the cartel due to his ruthless tactics and his ability to navigate the complex world of drug trafficking and organized crime. El Diego was responsible for overseeing much of the cartel's operations in the state of Chihuahua, which included the city of Ciudad Juarez, one of the most violent and dangerous cities in Mexico. Under his leadership, the cartel carried out a campaign of terror, using violence and intimidation to control the local population and suppress any opposition. Despite his notoriety, El Diego managed to evade capture by Mexican authorities for many years, thanks in part to his extensive network of associates and his ability to move freely between Mexico and the United States. A bounty of $1.2 million was placed on him, yet it seemed like he would remain in hiding forever. However, in 2011, he was finally apprehended by Mexican authorities and charged with a number of crimes, including drug trafficking, money laundering, and murder. He is said to be responsible for at least 1,500 deaths across Mexico. One of his many atrocities includes an attack on a rehabilitation center in which several residents were killed. It is believed that they were marked as members of rival gangs. He is also linked to a car bomb attack that claimed the lives of two police officers. El Diego's arrest was seen as a major victory for the Mexican government and the United States, which have been working together to dismantle the Gulf Cartel and other organized crime groups in Mexico. However, it was also a reminder of the ongoing challenges facing law enforcement officials in their efforts to combat drug trafficking and violence in Mexico. El Diego was ultimately extradited to the United States, where he faced trial on charges of drug trafficking and other crimes. In 2017, he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole, marking the end of his reign of terror and violence in Mexico. Gabriel Cardona At only 19 years old, Cardona was already in police custody, and his story was one that made the rounds stirring up emotions as it was told. A young kid living in the horror-filled life of cartel crime. His childhood friend was Rosalio Reta, who began killing at only 13 years old, and together they made a formidable team. Cardona began taking the shortcut to riches by stealing cars and selling them across the border, but living along the border soon led him to dive deeper into other crimes. He was one of five children. His father left when he was only a child, and he developed an affinity for the streets. From selling stolen vehicles, he began to sell and smuggle drugs and ammunition. In no time, he decided that it was time to join the cartels. After all, his friends were there too, and he saw them living large. He wanted that kind of life too, 
so he took the plunge. When he first began, it seemed unreal to him to see hidden crevices, rooms, and backs of buildings where people were tortured to reveal information and then brutally murdered or decapitated. It seemed like a scene out of a horror movie, but soon he was a key player in these horror scenes and he was the assailant, not the victim. His bosses gave him exotic apartments and luxurious cars to live in and move around, but he had just one assignment, be ready to kill. He had to be on standby waiting for instructions concerning targets and was paid tens of thousands of dollars each week and extra when he successfully hit his target. He was living the life he dreamed of, so he forsook his education and dedicated himself fully to becoming an assassin. This life was short-lived and he was soon arrested by the police. He admitted to killing over 30 people in about two years and was sentenced to 80 years in prison. Cardona will likely die in incarceration, but he doesn't regret what he did. He says, I'm really a good person. It just happened. Ovidio Guzman Lopez Ovidio Guzman Lopez is a notorious drug lord and son of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, former leader of the Sinaloa cartel. Ovidio was born in 1990 and grew up surrounded by the drug trade, inheriting his father's criminal legacy and becoming a key player in the Sinaloa cartel's operations. Following his father's arrest and extradition to the United States, he and his brothers, jointly known as Los Chapitos, took up the leadership of the cartel, continuing the diversified drug trafficking operations throughout the region. From the cultivation of drug fields to smuggling into US territory, Ovidio and his brothers seemed determined to match up to their father's reputation and more. In October 2019, Ovidio made international headlines when he was briefly arrested by Mexican security forces in the city of Culiacán, Sinaloa. The operation to capture Ovidio was an attempt by the Mexican authorities to curb the violent activities of the cartel within the region. With the long sought after kingpin Joaquin Guzman in custody, they believed that it would be easy to take down the cartel completely by going after Los Chapitos, and Ovidio was their first port of call. However, the arrest quickly turned into a violent confrontation as heavily armed cartel members took to the streets to free Ovidio. The situation quickly spiraled out of control, with shootings and explosions reported across the city. Backup soldiers were sent to calm the unrest, but the cartel members were bent on unleashing violence until Ovidio was released. In the end, Mexican authorities were forced to let him go in order to prevent any further bloodshed. This was a huge slap in the face of the president and security forces of Mexico, but it increased the notoriety of Ovidio, garnering him a reputation as one of the most dangerous leaders in the cartel. In January of 2023, the government came for him again, but this time they were better prepared and his cartel was too. But after a bloody battle, he remained in custody and will likely be extradited to the United States to face charges on drug trafficking just like his father. During his arrest, 10 soldiers were killed as well as 19 cartel members as the rebels set vehicles on fire, set up roadblocks, and even fired at planes at the local airport, which had to be shut down briefly. Ovidio is currently cooling his heels at a federal maximum prison. Thank you for watching this video. To see more riveting content like this, click on any of the two videos on your screen. See you there.